what is the data that what is the knowledge we are providing to the system that is a data in unsupervised no one is monitoring the learning of the machine machine will have its own data it will learn by its own data and it will produce its own output that is unsupervised learning we can give the supervised or the training in two forms one is classification and one is regression everyone welcome to the session on artificial intelligence and application for 6th semester bca students myself indu j faculty of computer science department vidyashram first grade college the temple of excellence myself in this session we are going to discuss on unit 4 that is learning so far we have discussed about artificial intelligence how we are going to provide this intelligence by making machine learn right so how we are going to make machine learn is the thing what we are going to discuss in this complete unit that is learning learning refer to what learning refer to machine my how machines going to learn by itself so let us see what in learning we have when we say it's learning we refer to the machine learning right how machine can learn what is machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence which enables the machine automatically learn from the data from where it is learning from the given data what is the data that what is the knowledge we are providing to the system that is a data improves the performance from the past experiences and, and make the predictions how it is going to learn as a human learns by their experience similarly the machine learns by their decision what the decision they have taken previously comparing that with the present then it going to improve that decision what to be added and what to be deleted like that it uh, learns from what learns from the past experience and make the predictions make the current predictions machine learning contains set, set of algorithms that works on huge amount of data we cannot when we are we are, when we are making machine to learn or the computer to learn we cannot have a limited set of data it requires a large set of data that includes all possibilities all the chances all the scenarios all should be included in one or the other data set so we requires a large amount of the data. Data. data is fed to these algorithms once we give that data sets to the algorithm to train them and on the basis of the training what we provide or the programmer provide based on the training they build the model and perform the specific task that's how machine going to learn what the first thing we have to give the data sets after giving the data set we have to train the machine for this data set this is a training and this should be the output we have to train the machine once we have done the training next whenever we give the new data set it will take the experience from the training and then it will predict the new solutions that is what all about the machine learning forms of learning how many types or how many forms of learning machine learning we have we have categorized the machine learning mainly into four categories one is supervised machine learning unsupervised semi supervised and reinforcement as name itself indicates in the supervised machine learning someone is there to supervise what is the input given and what should be the output whether the output is correct or not what we are getting that is supervised in unsupervised no one is monitoring the learning of the machine machine will have its own data it will learn by its own data and it will produce its own output that is unsupervised learning semi supervised learning some of the data sets is given with the supervised mode and some of the data sets is given with the unsupervised mode that is semi supervised first we are giving what giving some data sets and providing the training to the machine once we have done with the training it will uh, it will do the remaining task by itself that is unsupervised learning that is a combination of semi supervised learning is a combination of supervised and unsupervised 
and a reinforcement running we are forcing machine to learn from its circumstances that is a reinforcement learning so here is an example machine learning type one is supervised machine learning example housing prediction what is uh, exactly the rate housing rates going on in this particular area if it is in mysore or if it is in bangalore or if it is in haas and somewhere else like that and the medical imaging we are going to predict we are going to give some images to the machine so as a data set and we train that particular machine for the particular data sets then we can get the output whether it is uh, in a proper sessions or not in unsupervised learning what is the example for unsupervised learning customer segmentation and then the market basket analysis how market is going on so how to analyze that market if you go to the stock market of it if you go to the online shopping markets anything so that can be analyzed using the unsupervised learning semi-supervised learning is what is a combination of both text analysis and the lane finding for gps data these are the examples where we are using the semi-supervised learning method. When it comes to the reinforcement learning method, optimizing the market and driverless cars, that comes under the reinforcement learning. The best example what we give uh, for the machine learning is um, your online shopping. Whenever you do shopping, you put some keywords uh, for clothing, for sneakers, or for shoes, or, or for handbags or something. Next time when you open the site, it will suggest you whatever you are searched for. That is what the best example and the relatable example what we can give for the machine learning. Next, what it comes supervised machine learning for your syllabus we are mainly concentrating on supervised machine learning so what is supervised machine learning means it means in the supervised machine learning technique we train the machines using the label using the label means we are segregating the objects and then the classes with the proper labels uh, and based on the training the machine predicts the output whatever the training we give depending on that machine is going to predict the output what the output can be and what the output should be so what is label here labeled data specify that some of the inputs are already mapped to the output for example if i say 2 plus 2 as an input it should give the 4 this is a mapped right this is a labeled one we already know so some of the data is already mapped to the output whenever we give such input it should give such output that is a label when we are categorizing properly for which input what output should be there first we train the machine with the input and the corresponding output whenever we train we have to tell the machine that this for this input this should be the output for this input 2 minus 2 this should be the output like this we should train the machine because machine does not have its own intelligence once we train depending on that training it can make a decision right and then we ask the machine to predict the output using the test data so once we give some other data depending on this whatever the training we have provided it it can predict the output that is what we are going to do in the supervised learning supervised learning example what we can give is input data sets for cats and then the dogs we are providing two images one is catch image and a dog image machine has to find out whether the given image is a catch image or the given image is a dog image before giving the input for any as a uh, image to the machine we have to train the machine first we will provide the training to the machine to understand the images what the shape and size of the cat and the shape and size of the dog, shape and size of the tail in the cat and the shape and size of the uh, tail of the dog. Dog tail is always curving but uh, cat tail is not curving. Like this particular small small input we have to give to the machine for the training. As shape and size of the tail of cat and the dog, shape of uh, size, eyes and the colors, height, Compared to dogs, cats are very smaller, like that thing will be given as a training, etc. Many features can be given for the training. After completing the training, we input the picture of a cat. 
we input the picture of cat and ask the machine to identify the object and predict the output once we are giving the input picture as the cat picture what should be the output out should be should be it has to detect that the given image is a cat image depending on what depending on its tail depending on its uh, eyes or the color or the height of the cat is going to predict it is a cat image the main goal of the supervised machine learning technique is to map the input variable x what is my input variable x a cat image is a input variable x with the output variable y output variable y is what text message what we are getting for the image what we are give, giving getting it's a text message what you are getting some real world applications where we can use a supervised learning is risk assignment fraud detection and spam filtering etc these are all some of the examples where we are using the supervised machine learning next uh, categories of supervised machine learning again we have a two categories in the supervised machine learning classified it into two type of problem as given classification and regression we can give the supervised or the training in two forms one is classification and one is regression method let us see what is classification method classification means you are categorizing with the particular thing like whether it is true or not categorizing it seriously that is what the categorization classification algorithm are used to solve the classification problem in which the output variable categories such as yes or no we can have either yes or no we have a clear difference between each other each classification whether he is a male or he is a female like that we have a clear difference there is no ambiguity when we are classifying it so the classification algorithm predicts the categories present in the data set what all the categories that are present whether it is belongs to s category or it belongs to no category maybe is not there and uh, some real world example of classification algorithm is spam detection or email filtering you may you might have uh, seen in your emails uh, you have a inbox inbox you have a spam and something whatever the data come, whatever the mails come to you uh, that will comes to promotional or spam or to the inbox which is a promotional like uh, whatever you do in the facebook twitter insta that all comes to the promotional folder the spam depending on some keywords whatever is programmed for depending on that keyword the those will go to the spam messages and primary messages will be there in your inbox for that we are using the supervised machine learning some of the popular algorithm for classification supervised machine learnings are random forest algorithm we can use for the classification decision tree we can use for the classification and logistic regression we can use for the classification and support vector machine for classification these are all some of algorithms which implements the classification method for the supervised machine learning then comes with the regression second form is what regression what is a regression there in the classification we have departing yes or no we have clear classification either yes or no here in the regression we have a continuous input and we have a continuous output uh, used to solve the regression problem in which there are a linear relationship between the input and then the output variable we have a relationship a single line relationship between the input and then the output these are used to predict the continuous output variable we are predicting what continuously we are giving the input continuously and output will be changed depending on the predictions uh, as per the market trends weather prediction weather prediction as you are working with the stock market the market values will keep on changing as we are going for the weather report maybe morning it may be hot uh, afternoon it may be raining evening it may be cloudy like that it will keep on changing that is that type of supervised learning is provided using the regression method some of the popular regression algorithms are simple linear regression multi 
effective uh, varietal regression algorithm, decision tree algorithm. Decision tree algorithm can be used for the classification as well as for the regression method and the loss of regression. These are different type of algorithm through which we can achieve the regressions. Next, what we have is advantage and disadvantage of supervised machine learning. What is the advantage in the supervised machine learning? Since the supervised learning works with the labeled data set, so we can have an exact idea about the object and then the classes. For the given input, this should be the output. We have a categorized for given input, this should be the output. So we have uh, knowledge, uh, the programmer have a knowledge, proper knowledge of what are the classes and the object that are used for the training. These algorithms are helpful in predicting the output based on the prior experience. Depending on the prior experience or the prior training what we have given to the machine, depending on that it will predict the next output. What is the disadvantage we have in the supervised machine learning? These algorithms are not able to solve the complex task because we are categorizing it properly, yes or no like that. So other real world problem cannot be put properly in the supervised machine learning. It may predict the wrong output if the data set differ from the training data set. Whatever we have trained for, it can predict only that. If the data set is not, if I give the picture of lion instead of the cat, it can predict, it can predict the wrong output, right? Because the machine is trained for cat as well as the dog. It is not trained for the lion or the tiger. If I give the picture of the tiger, it may predict the wrong output. That is what the disadvantage what we have in a supervised machine learning. It requires a lot of computational time to train the algorithm because we have to train the machine with the lot of data sets. We cannot train the machine with the small, smaller data set. So we have to need a large or uh, huge data set. So it will require more computational time only for training the machine. So these are all the disadvantage what we have for the supervised machine learning. So what are the applications of supervised machine learning? The supervised machine learning can be used in image segmentation. Segmentation means again we come with the classification method, right? We are classifying whether yes or no. We are segmenting the images and medical diagnosis. For medical diagnosis, if you go for x-rays, MRI, scanning, that all comes in the form of pictures, images that can be used that images is given as an un training data sets and we can predict the what should be the whether there is a problem or not. So that is a medical diagnosis we can use. Fraud detections, we can use it for the fraud detection like uh, supervised learning and spam detection. We have already explained how the spam detection can be done depending on some keywords uh, which is trained for it will uh, push all the mail from uh, whichever you are getting depending on the keyword it will push to the spam. Then speech recognition is also one of the main applications where we can use a supervised machine learning. Next what we have is decision tree. As we have seen so uh, we can achieve a classification as well as a regression using a decision tree algorithm. Decision tree is a supervised learning technique that can be used for both for classification as well as a regression problem. But mainly decision tree usually uh, focuses on the classification. Okay, uh, It is a tree structure classifier. We have a tree structures where the, we have a whenever we say we have a tree means we have a nodes, right? We have an internal node representing the features of the data set. What all the features of the data set will be represented by what? Internal nodes. Branches represent the decision rules depending on what I am taking the decision for the next node that will be represented by branches and each leaf node represent the outcome. Leaf node will be represented as a output of that particular decision. In the decision tree, there are two nodes which are first one is decision node and second one is leaf node. What is a decision node? Decision node depends on the attributes or the features it will take a decision and the leaf node is what? Leaf node is a output of that particular decision. The decisions or the test are performed on the basis of features 
a given data set how this decision can be done depend on the given data set or the depends on the given training in order to build a tree we use a cart algorithm what is cart algorithm which is a classification and regression tree algorithm classification and regression tree algorithm we use to make a decision from the decision node to the leaf node next what we have is decision tree in the decision tree this is a example what we have taken decision tree simply ask the question and based on the answer whether it is yes or no it further split into the sub tree here this decision node which is a root node starting with yes or we can consider is a start node it will decide on some attribute all the features right features it will give one more sub tree here also we have one more sub tree again we have to take a decision here whether it is yes or no if it is yes move to the left sub tree if it is no move to the right sub tree similarly yes or no if yes go to this leaf node if no go to this leaf node after this we don't have any decision because leaf node is what leaf node is a outcome what we are expecting for similarly for the right sub tree also if yes make a decision if no then think about some more attributes or the feature if yes make a decision if no make a that decision that is what diagram explain the general structure of decision tree that's how we are going to represent the decision tree uh, why to use a decision tree there are some basic reasons why to use a decision tree two main reasons for decision tree is a decision tree usually mimic the human thinking ability while making a decision whenever you are joining to the particular college you might have think of lot of options right what all the attributes what all the features whether it is nearby what is the fee structure how the course will be like that you will be having different uh, prospect of opting the college right so that is what you are thinking it represent the human behavior okay this is true this is true if this is true it is nearby okay one mark is ticked then what next we have to think we have to think how the uh, course is how the course is yes the course is good next go to the decision finally you come to the leaf node making a decision to opt this college or not opt to this college what is the fee structure whether the fee structure is feasible for us or not so that is all what it predicts the human thinking the logic behind the decision tree can be easily understood because it shows in tree like structure since we are providing in the tree like structure it is easy to understand that is why we are going for decision tree algorithm next what is the algorithm how this is going to uh, work algorithm is going to work let us see step by step representation in the first step what we are doing we begin the tree with the root node that is s or the start node we can say which is containing the complete data set the point is that it should complain a complete data set step 2 find the best attribute in the data set using the attribute selection measure this is one of the method to select just i have given you the example whether it is near by what is the fee structure how the course is so these are all the attributes right depending on that attribute you are going to select the best attribute first first what you look into what is the fee structure yes fee structure is feasible for us go to this if not fee structure is not feasible then no go to no right in the step 3 divide the yes into subset again if fee structure is feasible then i am what checking whether it is near to the house again one sub tree one more decision attribute come into picture sub tree that constrains the possible values and the best attribute again we have to select the best attribute out of out of that Gen generate the decision tree node which contains the best attribute by doing this we can generate the decision tree by choosing always the best attribute and the step 5 recursively we have to make the new decision always the entry using the subset and the data set created by the step 3 Okay, then continue this process until the stage is reached. What is a stage? 
to opt the college. Until unless you opt the college, you will keep on recursively doing the same thing. They classify the nodes is called as final nodes or the leaf node. Whatever the output we are getting, we give it as an, a leaf node. So this is the algorithm what we have for the decision tree. This is an example here we have taken the salary example. If you are going to um, company or going to take a job offer, what you are checking for salary. It is a uh, 50,000 to 80,000. Yes, if it is uh, around 50,000 to 80,000. Yes, I am okay with this. If it is not 50,000, then decline the offer. I don't want this job offer. I have a better job opportunity I'll search for. If you are okay with this next attribute, what you are going to check? Whether the office is nearby, nearby or no, how, many, how much time I need to travel from the house to office daily. So if it is feasible, okay, you opt the best possible option. You know, if it is very far, I cannot travel, you can decline a offer again. Again, provide the whether they provide the company will provide the cab facility or I should go by my own with my vehicle. So if you are okay with going by your own vehicle, again, accept the offer. Or if you are not okay with okay with going by your own vehicle you want only the cab then deny the offer this is one more real life example for making a decision using a decision tree algorithm next what we have is a attribute selection measures i have told you how this decision can be done decision can be done using one technique called attribute selection measures that is called as uh, the main issue arises how to select the best attribute from the root node to the sub node there are two main things how we can select by finding the information gain and by giving the Gini index. Next, what is the information gain? What is the information provided? Information gain is nothing but the weighted average into uh, entropy of each feature. What is a weighted object? We have already discussed what is a weight. Some information is given when we are searching and when we are traversing the tree. So that information that is called as the weight of the node. What is entropy? Entropy is a matrix to measure the impurity in the given attribute. For example, here you can, uh, you have seen, right? So these are all the impurities what we have. We are not making a decision based on that. So that, that is a measure of impurity. Entropy is what the measure of impurity given uh, in the attribute. It specifies the randomness in the data. Data what we are providing is not all valid data. We have some impurity, randomness in the data. That is calculated by the entropy. As entropy is equal to minus P log, uh, log of P log 2 log to the base 2 to the p and minus uh, log 2 base to the p. This is a equation what we have to find the entropy and where s stands for what? s stands for total number of sample, how many sample of data we are providing and p of s stands for probability. What is the probability of saying yes in that and p no stands for what is the probability of saying no in that particular decision. So this is what we are going to check the impurity. Next, one more uh, type what we have to measure the attribute that is a Gini index. What is Gini index? It measures the impurity or the purity used while creating a decision tree. What is a measure of purity? How many S are there and how many no's are there? It measures the impurity as well as purity of the decision tree using the cart. What is cart? We have already algorithm that is a classification and regression tree algorithm. Using this algorithm, it will make a decision. An attribute with the low Gini index should perform as a uh, which 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 will be having the higher performance and the uh, attribute which is having the greater Gini uh, index will be having the low performance. That performance is what uh, performance is greater for Gini index when it is less, and performance is less when Gini index is more. So this is what the performance measure what we get in the Gini index. Gini index can be calculated using the below formula. This is a formula what we have to calculate the Gini index. So next what comes is puring. What is puring? Puring is again process of deleting the unnecessary node from the 
tree that is removing the impurities from the tree that is again called as puring get the opt why we have to do so to get the optimal decision we have to do puring there are two main two types of puring one is a cost complex puring and the reduced error mure. we can achieve the puring or we can achieve the or remove the impurity by using the cost complexity which needs more cost to implement we can reduce that or by you can reducing the errors what we are getting in the tree by reducing the errors we can remove the impurity that is uh, the process is called as puring next what is the advantage and the disadvantage we have in the decision tree what are the advantage we can represent it in a very simple manner it is easy to understand it is simple to understand and it follows the same process of the human that they follow when they are thinking like probability and erase that probability if it is not working then it can be useful for solving the decision related problem first we have to go through with the all the attributes so that it can solve the decision related problem make the decisions very easy it helps to think about the possible outcome of the problem when we have a decision tree we can have all the possible outcome with us depending on that our scenario we can choose any one possible outcome on that uh, there is a less requirement of the data cleaning compared to the other algorithm in uh, decision tree we have a Im less impurity compared to the other algorithm so these are the advantage what we have in the decision tree coming to the disadvantage of the decision tree uh, tree uh, contains lot of layers which makes the complex when we are going or when we are taking a decision on any complex problem it will be having more number of levels so that can create the problem it may have a overfitting issues so everything if you are going for the complex family everything we cannot fit in the fit in within the particular layer of the level of the tree overfitting issues which can be resolved by using the random forest algorithm so we have to implement other algorithm for that for more class labels the computational complexity of the decision tree may be increases as the complexity of the problem increases the computational time will be of the decision tree will be increased so these are all the disadvantage what we have in the decision tree thank you